Thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, so thank you for coming in this room. I think uh, I can assume that everybody in this room and also if you are watching the live stream, um, you care about diversity, especially in the Python community. That's why you're here with me. Um, so thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, you can keep the discussion with me uh, on Twitter. It's welcome. Uh, I will tell a little bit about me. Uh, so thanks for introducing me. I, am, uh, I currently live in London as a data scientist. Uh, in London, I, uh, I'm very active in doing a lot of stuff. I try to, because uh, I love the community, I want to um, contribute more. So I co-organize uh, some meetups, including the AI Club for Gender Minorities. I'm so glad that I have uh, two uh, co-organizers here with me in EuroPython. I'm so happy. I, I love them. Um, also, I organize some um, sprints, uh, which is uh, mainly to um, be focusing on contributing to open source. So, uh, so far, uh, we have uh, sprints uh, once per month and uh, so almost once per month so um, it's, it's, a, it's a fun time I love doing it and also I myself contribute to a lot of um, open source libraries it's a small contribution but I think everybody can do it if I can do it you can do it uh, also I created this uh, pix and mix uh, thank you so much uh, I have some uh, a designer uh, I, I hope I pronounced his name correct is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I, this designer created this logo for me. Thank you so much. Uh, that's about open source, right? It's like everybody contribute. So, okay, enough for open source. <laughs> so, um, so a couple of months ago, I found this um, blog post, which kind of, um, kind of uh, get my attention. Why women are flourishing in our community, but lacking in Python. So. Uh, myself, my background um, as a data scientist, I started uh, when I started to, you know, um, doing data science, I was using R, but uh, for different reasons, I switched to Python, and from there, I know that the Python community is lovely, and that, that comes to my, like, I think about why we have this problem, because the Python community is lovely, like, why we, like, women are not enjoying Python as much as ours, so mm, I, w I need to have a look. So um, we see that actually um, we have uh, more than, like, six times more Python users than the R users, according to the um, Stack Overflow survey last year in 2018. So, um, but there's a lot of people using Python, right? Python is lovely, you know, um, the community is lovely. But we only have 1.25 times more members in PyLadies than our ladies. So what happened? Is it really like we don't have that much, you know, um, female Python users or, or, or female Python users are not active in the community? It's like, hmm, uh, why the number doesn't match? And then also something worrying is like for contributors, again, like I contribute to open source, I would love to do more and then, but why? R has four times more female contributor than Python. I was like, oh, we are lagging in presence in the, in the, you know, in contribution to open source in Python communities. Like, oh no, it's not good. Also, um, for networks, so um, uh, as a with the organizer, there is like our ladies. Is there's 120 chapters in 40 countries? It's everywhere, but in Pi ladies we have less. We have only 45 chapters, active chapters, in 12 countries. So um, I'm very lucky. I'm in one of the biggest city in Europe, in London. We have Pi ladies, and uh, I know that like there's also Pi ladies remote, um, uh, which is you know is a remote is for everybody who's like in the city that is you know like smaller city that doesn't have a Pi ladies they can join, but still like it's it's lacking. It, it would be great if like we have more and more um, Pi ladies chapter to for for women to to network to you know feel that they are not the minorities. They are not alone. They they are also important in the Python community. So it's like mm, there are problems there. Also, um, it could be the problem is is not like a problem that you know that somebody want to make, right? Because there may be a fundamental problem that you know the users. If you, if you think about the users, right? For our, uh, I keep you know um, having um, different people. They have like maybe they're statisticians. They come from an academic background. They say, "Oh, R is amazing. It's so easy to use." And all these, I was like, "Hmm, but Python is also amazing and easy to use. Have you heard about that?" Um, so uh, there is actually statistic that is showing that actually. 
um, most Python users, they're actually maybe from a more uh, engineering, computer science background, maybe, um, you know, uh, most, most students in computer science, they maybe when they were in university, they learn, you know, using C++. I, my first computer course um, that, you know, I, I attend in university was actually using C++. And also Python, now it's getting more and more popular. Uh, this morning, you know, um, Martin mentioned that in Basel, there's um, the Python in education. It's like now they're teaching Python in schools. So yeah, maybe computer science students, they have a lot of exposure in using Python. But for for, peop, for uh, students that you know maybe their discipline is like uh, more like you know math or or social science or even like economies uh, economics uh, or even like um, journalism because now data journalism is a thing right they may be using R instead of um, Python so um, so yeah that, that that's a that's a really like a, a difference demographic in the in the two two language users. And we can also see that because, um, yeah, because um, for different disciplines, um, we can see that computer science, in uh, computer science graduates, especially in the Western world, is mainly male dominated. They're like, you know, um, uh, you can, if you you can see like uh, for these like stat statistic majors, they are like more or less you know there's like half and half. There's like 44 percent women, but uh, for computer science, it's only 19 percent. It's like oh, maybe we should think about getting more girls to study computer science. Maybe that's the thing. So um, yeah, there's also like million questions that we have to um, have to attack, have to answer um, to help the, that the diversity. Also, I have seen this um, this uh, Jupyter notebook that uh, actually I can show you the notebook here. Okay, uh, the internet is uh, slow at the moment. Um, okay, <laughs> can you see that? Yeah, uh, right. So if I zoom in, so this notebook is very very good. Actually, uh, the first time I came across it is was. Um, in the kind of, I joined the uh, non-focused DISC, um, you know, mailing list, and then they were circulating this um, Jupyter notebook because what they talk about is about the inequality in the uh, leadership in non-focused projects. Yeah, pi data leadership is like, oh, it's like an inequality of you know underrepresenting groups, and then they use a very scientific way. I, I won't show you the details. I will upload the slide so you can you know um, check it out yourself. And they made this notebook, you know, and I'm thinking about maybe I could change this data.json and I can do <laughs> different research on it as well. So this is the result, right? And maybe I should switch back to the slide so it's easier to see. So uh, they use that scientific method to show that um, is uh, how, how diverse is each project. So these are um, non-focused projects. I think this statistic is done last year. So there's some like, new ones that is not updated, but uh, anyway. Um, so you can see that um, the, the inequality is, like, is going to be, uh, actually how to look at this is like, if it's lower, if you have a lower score like Andrak, they are very, they are more diverse. So you can see that NumPy, PyMC3, they are not very diverse. Um, I think these ones are the ones that, yeah, they got a, a, a score that's one. So the uniqueness is one. So uh, they have only one gender as the, as the main you know, um, contributor. So, uh, <laughs> so which gender, uh, I think, is uh, quite obvious and easy to guess. Um, so you can see like from these, uh, from the, the the bottom ones are more and more equal one, and you can see like our own size in it. You know, like uh, some you know open journals. They are like, oh, you can see that there's actually like a domain difference as well. Like maybe things that are more numeric, more um, you know maybe f physics related. They ha they are less you know um, diverse. So yeah, that's very interesting. And also in that um, Jupyter notebook, you mentioned one uh, idea which I think is very, very good. It's called active and passive diversity problems. So active diversity problem means that there are people or a group of members that they are toxic. They don't want the community to be diverse. And passive means that 
Actually, nobody wants it, but if nobody's do anything to it, then it's the fundamental bias in it, in the uh, inequality. So um, I think uh, it's my opinion that the Python community is having a passive problem. I haven't encountered any active problem in the Python community, very luckily. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's even worse. Um, maybe, so, so the, the other thing is like, maybe in workspace we could, we have a chance to um, you know, um, face some active um, diversity problem. Uh, but in, in the community, I think so far, my experience mainly passive problem. So um, yeah, so that means that we have to do something to improve it. Uh, okay, so the, the, the previous information that I gave you is mainly based on a blog post that I see, and then also like I saw, and then also um, a Jupyter notebook that somebody did, which is amazing. Uh, so I tried to do something myself. Um, this is a research <laughs> that I did um, uh, referred to last year. So um, I'm thinking about, because I've been to 10 conferences last year, <laughs> very luckily. Um, I enjoy every single one of them. But um, is there an imbalance of gender ratio in Python conferences? Because you can, like, I think it's quite obvious if you have a coffee break, if you go to the, the, the toilets. Uh, here the venue is lovely, you know, it's very big, so maybe this less obvious. But if you go to a smaller venue, you can see that usually, you know, outside the male toilet, there'll be a long queue, and a female toilet is like, I can go in, like, and then there's like, empty, and oh, it's, it's good in that sense. But maybe it means that it's not good in diversity. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I try to do something. I try to um, see, uh, is there like an imbalance? Like uh, how, like oh, it's obviously, they may, there, there's obviously like an imbalance, but how imbalanced is this? Uh, it's difficult to count the, 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 the participant because I talk to people, but I can't talk to every single one of the participant. So, um, okay, what's the easiest way to, 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 to count? It's like, oh, maybe I should count the speakers because all talks are recorded. So, ah, it's very easy. And, um, but uh, I have to really um, uh, say that this is not very accurate. Reason being, um, not all talks are recorded because some speaker they may prefer it not to be recorded. Also, um, for uh, the gender of the speaker, I didn't really do a research of like, you know, researching on every single speaker are they male or female or non-binary. Um, I just based on the pronoun that maybe the chair used to describe them. So, it's, uh, yeah, if, if I made a mistake, that's 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 that's. Uh, that's difficult to avoid, but, um, but I hope this gives a general idea of uh, how imbalanced it is. So uh, this is the statistic, I hope it's clear enough. Um, so you can see that, ooh, like um, the blue, blue bars are male, and the red bars are non-male, so including female and non-binary uh, speakers. So except Python UK, there is 75% of speakers are male. They are doing very well, <laughs> but um, which means that there isn't enough non-male speakers. And why is uh, is it because uh, when the call for proposal open, there's like a lot of male submission? Because um, this year I'm in the um, uh, programming work group of Euro Python, and I can see that yeah, there's a really imbalance. And then I think uh, conference organizers they they put into an account they have the diversity mission in their mind, but still. Um, this is difficult to achieve because uh, in the submission there's already a very, very imbalanced uh, demographic. And um, so, how can we improve that? How can we encourage more diverse speaker? Maybe not just gender, maybe um, speaker with different backgrounds to speak. So um, I will also talk about that later. Uh, but before I specifically talk about uh, some. Uh, suggestion that we could do in the Python community. I would like to talk about the diversity problem in theater. Because um, as a person living in London, I love going to theater. I'm very lucky that you know London is a theater city. So um, yeah, so it's like uh, this uh, is also a hot topic in London. Like uh, theater goer critics, they they really like notice this diversity problem in theaters. So maybe from learning from them, we can we have some idea of how we can improve. So um, I also read a lot about news and blog posts in theater. So this is one of the posts that I come across. 
uh, it's talking about, sorry, it's talk about um, the best way to address the, the theater's lack of diversity. So yeah, there's a problem. So, so what's the problem specifically? Um, who is on the stage? Uh, it's like it's kind of similar to my problem about you know conference speakers. So, people on the spe on the stage is actually um, attracting people who will be participating. But uh, like for example, in London theatre, there's a problem because some productions um, they have a whole cast of 22 white actors on stage. So there's uh, for them the the more um, diversity questions they're addressing is maybe. Um, ethnicity of the actors. So huh, sometimes you know a play, it could be a modern play, it could be the, the, the race of, of, the, of the actor is not the most important thing, but still it's uh, kind of very white dominating um, business. And who is in the audience? Uh, also in London, uh, I, I love London being such a diverse uh, city. It's like 44% of the, the people in, in, in London, they are, they are, you know, they're classify as uh, BAME, which is um, kind of, uh, we can say they're, they're like uh, ethnic minorities, they're, you know, um, you know uh, Asian, you know, or black, you know. So, um, yeah, but still, if you, if you are like a Lon uh, London theatre goer like me, you can see that if you go to the Royal Court Theatre in London, you can see most audience, because my experience, I go to see a play, there's an Asian play, it's like almost all the cast are Asian girls, and then, but, but still, because it's, uh, the Royal Court Theatre is located in the very prestigious location in London, it's like in the in the audience, there's like still very like um, kind of white middle class dominating. So it's like, mm. and also there's a problem in influencer. It's kind of like the leaders of, of theatre, like who is making the decision, who um, who are the artistic director of theatre, who decided what production to put on stage, um, and you know, um, all the critics they will be like, you know. Um, their identity may kind of um, change the way they, how they judge whether this play is a good play or not a good play. So hmm, this influencer, there's also not very much of them are uh, from an um, a, a ethnic minority group. So, uh. so in that blog post, also talk about the chicken and egg situation because um, uh, the, um, the writer, he mentioned that one time there is a play called, um, called Fella uh, happening in London. And his uh, Fella is actually about a Nigerian singer. So like, he's very popular in Nigeria, I guess. So when this writer, uh, at that time, he was like, you know, traveling in the cab and uh, a lot of the cab drivers in London, they are from Nigeria. And they mentioned to him that, oh, I love this play. I went to see that again and again and again. You can imagine a cab driver, they are not earning a lot of money, but they, they maybe rarely go to the theater, but they, because they're from Nigeria, their identity kind of give them like attraction to this show about a Nigerian singer. So they love the show, they go to see it again and again and again. So, um, so what's being on stage actually affect who is watching it or who is participating. But, um, but sometimes the problem is like, if your audience is mainly, you know, uh, as I said before, the, if your audience mainly white, then maybe you want to have white actors on stage because you have to attract people to watch it. But this, then, then it's become a, a loop, an um, unhealthy loop that it will really stay into only one majority group and ignoring the minority groups, which is not very good. So um, also there's another right, uh, another, article, which is a very, very interesting. It's about uh, how to improve this situation, like how to make it more accessible for people from a different background. So for example, I mentioned about the influence of the people who make the, the decision, the gatekeeper. So nowadays in London, you can, um, you can see that there's like in some kind of very famous theater, the artistic director of those theaters, there's like more and more people from um, the minority groups. They are being the artistic directors. Uh, I've met uh, one lady. I think she she uh, she is not white. <laughs> She's a, but uh, she is the artistic director of um, one of these um, uh, famous theater. I think she. I really can't remember. But yeah, she she's an artistic director and. And I, I'm sure that there's a lot of artists that they are like talented artists, um, 
in the minority group, and it's just like it's taking them like quite a, a long time. If if we like kind of discover them, they may become you know um, uh, driving this you know big uh, wheel to go to uh, different directions. So it's it's a good thing that they they kind of changing now in London, and also in the theatre itself, there's accessibility. For example, um, uh, in London now, uh, I kind of enjoy that as well because um, there's always some kind of cheaper tickets, like ten pounds, um, to watch a play in the West End, which is uh, which is very very good. Um, so if you book early enough, you'll be able to enjoy some cheap tickets. So theatres kind of become accessible for all, even though for people who don't have a lot of budget. Also, the theatre, you know, sometimes you know the the bar and the restaurant, they try to not always have expensive stuff. Maybe some kind of uh, still more expensive than you know buying from a corner shop, but but they try to make it not super fancy and you know, not for people who are like in a dress and a suit to enjoy, which is good. Um, also, um, uh, some uh, accessibility measure was uh, implied. For example, they have um, they have some uh, sign language um, performance. So it's for people who uh, are you know, hearing impaired, they, have a poem, uh, they can enjoy the performance even though they can't hear. Uh, I've been to a, a production with one of the drama school, a uh, famous drama school in London, and they have two casts. One cast is their student, a very talented student, and the other cast which is performing with them side by side, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, actors that uh, you know, they, they use sign language. They, they, they may be deaf, uh, but um, they use sign language to perform, which I think is, is amazing. It's amazing production because it's accessible for everybody. And also sometimes there's like audio described performance, including the one that I went to. Uh, for some stage direction, they would describe it. They would say it out because for people, maybe they have sight impaired. They could still enjoy the performance. Um, and also, for example, accessible toilet and all this is is um, for people um, who maybe have mobility problems. Um, also, and it's this one thing that a lot of places overlook, I think it's more popular in movies, is a relaxed performance, so the lights won't be totally dim. People are welcome to come in and out because maybe they are parents with kids, so like they can bring kids into the, the movie or bring the baby to movie. If the baby have needs, they need to care, uh, care for the baby, they can go in and out and everybody go to that screening, they understand that it's for parents with the baby, which I think, I think is a good thing. I mean, like, um, parents shouldn't be, um, you know, pinned down to not enjoy this. So, okay, I will spend um, the rest of the talk talking about what we could do in Python community. Can we learn something from the theater, um, from the how theater improve? So uh, in the blog post that I mentioned in the, in the beginning, uh, I also mentioned that uh, PyCon now is having a great improvement because you can see that um, by doing like you know encouraging women to co uh, to come to the conference, they have um, you know talks by women starting from a very low percentage towards forty percent, which is really really good. And uh, this is PyCon in the U.S., so I think in Europe we are doing that as well, which is. Uh, which is very, very good, is the, we need to car uh, carry on the momentum. Also, non-focus, um, uh, you can see that they're both outside, they are, um, they are uh, an organization that is like um, uh, helping this, you know, funding this PyData community. So you can see that they have also measures, they have this DISC um, uh, com com committee, and they, uh, um, they have all these like, mailing lists and discussion. I, I joined the mailing list, so that's why I receive information. And also, um, they are giving diversity scholarships, so for uh, people from the minority group, if they kind of have st are struggling to get a ticket, then they could maybe apply for scholarships to attend the conferences. Also, Jungle Girl is amazing. Uh, we had the Jungle Girl day uh, on Monday, which is it has been like a recurring um, thing for Europe Python now. Um, every year, with the, they have this Jungle, kind of like a beginner's day to encourage um, women, um, especially, to start using Python and do something about Jungle, to build blog posts using Jungle, and. It's translated to 12 languages. It's, it's blooming. And then also, um, my friend mentioned it's very empowering for m women because uh, Jungle Girl prefer, of course, like they, they also have male mentors, but they prefer 
girls who have been, or, or women who have been to the, um, to be participate before, come back to become the mentor because, um, well, it shouldn't be always men teaching women. It should be, you know, we, we shouldn't care about the gender. It's like who, ha who have experience teach the people who don't have experience. So, um, so in my opinion, um, for conferences, because yeah, I, I'm now involved in conferences uh, a lot, so um, I have um, a lot of ideas. For example, childcare um, facilities, I think um, PyCon UK is doing it, um, PyData is doing it, um, yeah, PyData London is doing it. So um, yeah, I think maybe uh, EuroPython, maybe we should consider as well, because um, yeah, because uh, you, you can, it's, it's like the, those theater thing, right? It's like parents shouldn't be, um, uh, uh, you know, they shouldn't have this mind that, oh, oh, I have to care about my baby, so I can't go to a conference. Um, also, a diversity in topics, uh, again, you know, um, how we can make the uh, call for proposal more diverse is like maybe we encourage different topics. So, um, like the um, academic, you know, um, diversity, you know, maybe people from, uh, Generalist background or a statistic background, they could also talk about their work. So we are not limited to one kind of a profession, one domain, or one topic. So people from a different um, background, like a different you know professions, they can also, if they work related to Python in some way, then they could also um, present. Um, and also, we should also put some emphasis on education. Uh, again, you know, we see from the university example, you know, maybe we have to inspire more young girls to be, you know, doing um, a more, you know, a computer science or an engineering subject. So, yeah. Um, also, I think we should go beyond the Jungle Girl Workshop. Jungle Girl Workshop is amazing, as I said, but um, I think it shouldn't be limited to one topic like Jungle, one framework Jungle. Maybe we should expand it to um, other topics because now Python is not just used for web, you know, um, uh, web development. It could be used in all different type of stuff. So maybe because um, I'm a data scientist, I'm involved in data science. So and also Python is very popular in data science now. So maybe we should have something similar in data science um, to you know have a workshop to encourage um, uh, gender minority, especially women, to to start their career as a, you know, in data science. And also we should fear, uh, free the gender uh, barrier. For example, um, we have uh, people who are like, uh, you know, we have transcode, which uh, in Palindinium, they have the uh, transcode uh, workshop that is for people identify as trans or, you know, um, it's more for, for, for people who have certain, you know, um, identity, they could, you know, feel that they're not alone, they're not uh, minorities, in, they got support from the community as well. Also, oh, this one, I love it, non-gender label toilet. <laughs> um, so my last year in PyCon UK, and then they did a lot of work in this um, uh, non-gender non labeled um, toilet. So it's, the toilet is labeled um, as whether you have a urinal or not. So um, it doesn't matter what gender is like, what facility you, you, you're using. And also the t-shirts, it should like, uh, I, uh, my friend just told me in the um, non-focused guideline, if you organize a Pi Data conference, your t-shirt should be um, not gender label, should be is whether it's like um, a, a straight cut or it's fitted. So it's also, it's about your body shape, it's not about your gender, which I think is amazing. <laughs> and uh, this is mainly for conference, but uh, also we have other problems in the community and we have to try to solve it. Um, for example, maybe we, meet, we need more female leadership and contributors. So for me, my, um, my idea is like maybe if I organize some sprints, meet up, maybe I should have some, you know, again, it's like Jungle Girl, you know, some um, meet up that is mainly for encouraging people in a minority that you are not alone, you are not, uh, you got support from the community, let's do it together. So to get them started, to get them, you know, work their way towards the leadership or become a maintainer in the contributions. Um, also, yeah, in, in, you know, for, for young people and then in academia or even not, not just young people, maybe for researchers, we have to maybe do some outreaching to tell them Python is a good tool, let's use Python instead of R. <laughs> So yeah, uh, 
I only got uh, one minute left, so I don't think I could take a lot of questions now here. But I have this survey, which uh, you can give me some feedback. Uh, I remember there's some like free text that you could type whatever you like. Uh, please be kind to me and um, please give me feedback because I hope this um, talk I could keep giving it and maybe I can add more and more like for example some um, some things like some opinions from my from my friend or information from my friend which I can improve this presentation so um, I could keep raising the awareness and I hope we can work together and make the community more diverse and better so thank you so much So <laughs> I think we can, like, if anyone has one question, I think we can have a minute to spare. Or we can talk after that. Yeah, you can grab me in the conference or, um, yeah, the survey is always there. So please, um, your feedback, uh, I value a lot. So thank you so much.